Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock until 2.30 on thinktechhawaii.com in the downtown Pioneer Plaza studios of Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, we are a show that focuses on the positive stories in Hawaii, uh, positive business stories and their owners. You know, we've got an abundance of them here. Uh, and every year the PBN publishes the fastest 50. We have the SBA awards, not only on Oahu, but on every neighbor island. And so we've got probably well over a hundred different companies that get national or maybe statewide recognition. And some of them make national recognition uh, for their achievements and their success. Uh, and that doesn't even mention the runner-ups. So if you plug in the runner-ups to this, we've got a, an abundance of successful stories in Hawaii uh, that I'm here to share and, and hopefully people can learn from their experience. Uh, today we have Stanley Lau. Uh, he likes to go by Stan. Uh, he's the CEO of Hawaii Tech Support. He's also the chairman of the Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii's Young Professional Program. And so he's here today to talk a little bit about both of those uh, and also some of his maybe secrets of his success. Stan, it's good to have you on the show. Hi, Reg. Thanks for having me. Glad All to right. be here. Now, you've been in Hawaii a long time. Is this uh, your home? So I was born and raised here. Uh, after graduating from high school, I moved to Los Angeles, lived there for almost 10 years. Wow. Uh, my wife is from L.A., and um, in about 2004, we debated whether or not we should relocate, and ultimately, uh, being closer to family brought us back home. Oh, that's why you came back. That's why we came back. Very yeah. good. Yeah, it's a it's it's a sometimes a tough decision to you know. And I had been in Hawaii since '73. I left. I came back, and it was um, this is where I'm comfortable. This is where I want to be. Mm -hmm. But there was certain recognitions that I had to accept. You know, it's an expensive place to be, and there's some challenges. But you know, it's worth it. Absolutely. So it's good to be home. Yeah. So you've uh, you you what what high school did you go to? So public school. I went to Pearl City High School. Pearl City. All Pearl right. City. Cool. Mm -hmm. And and where you go to college? I went to UCLA. Uh, oh. I studied computer science and engineering um, there and worked in the LA area for another f about five years before moving home. Very good. Now, UCLA is a um, great school. And you know, you know why a lot of people go to UCLA? Because they can't spell USC. <laughs> Did you say spell or afford? <laughs> <laughs> No, but no, it's a great no, it's, school it, and it, both, yeah. great, great place to, to learn. And, and did you go right into the technology field when you were uh, in L.A.? No. So interesting enough, I, after graduating from high school, I took a year off and I worked. Um, I, coming out of Pearl City, I actually, funny you bring up SC because I applied as a civil engineer and I got accepted to USC and UCLA, um, but I at the time, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, so I moved to L.A., my family moved to L.A., mm -hmm. and I took a year off, and I basically worked at a um, systems builder. So wow. think of um, Dell before they were a large corporation. This was in the mid-'90s. Um, so we were, I was working at a system builder, assembling computers. Um, Different working. components of, of the, the yeah. system and all yeah. that. Yeah, and so it was that ultimately led me to reapply and go down the computer science path. Well, and that's kind of neat because that gave you a different perspective on things. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it, it, you probably got, as a result, you got a little bit more out of the education process because you had that experience. Right, and I, I was talking to someone recently how um, in some other countries they have tracks where um, as part of their curriculum, they get to experience workplace um, mm -hmm. trials, kind of like an internship, even in high school, and that helps people figure out if that's something they really want to do mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it was for me in that year, figuring out um, what I really love to do. That's great. Yeah, no, that, that's good. My uh, my son went through a, a similar. He's he's now one of the uh, the managers for the infrastructure over at the uh, Bank of Hawaii. Okay. And so he went through a, a similar type of process. Not sure which one he was going to do, and he kind of looked at two different areas. Engineering was a little mathematical, mm. and so he ended up going MIS side. But he did a, a good job, and he's got a good job now with the bank. So yeah. But having that work experience, and he worked at Super Geeks for a while, and he worked at different different other places, and and got some good, uh, I guess, hands-on experience in in what he wanted to 
you know what he didn't want and what mm -hmm. he really wanted to do. Right, so, right. So that's good. Um, now you've you've been doing the Hawaii Tech Support Company for how long now? So I started the company in two thousand and four. Uh, so we're in our thirteenth year. Uh, we st I basically started out consulting on my own. So with the experience. So you started with one guy. One guy out of um, our IA apartment. Wow. Back in 2004. And so um, I'm thankful uh, our first client was, um, who's still our client, she's very um, well known in town and she's been a great advocate for us. Um, and hopefully, you know, our work reflects, you know, our growth and all well, of that. I mean, the so. fact that she's still a client after 13 years is, yeah. is a real testimonial. Yeah, That's yeah, really we're, we're excited. And, you know, just over the years, it's, there's been a lot of learning. Um, a doing and hard work, so, but it's, I, I don't regret it. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Now, and we'll, we'll get more into the Hawaii Tech support uh, maybe in the second half of the show, but uh, you, you, more than Hawaii Tech support, you're also doing other things too, right? Right, right. Right, now you're the, uh, you just had your first uh, board meeting as chair of the Young Professional Group at the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. and how did that go? It was good. It's, um, it's a seat at with the full chamber of commerce, and it's a good opportunity, I think, for um, young professionals. So the YP program really is a professional organization for people who are between the ages of 21 and 39, and the goal are a fewfold. But I think, to me, the the primary um, focus of the organization is really the professional development aspect, mm -hmm. and whether that be um, learning life skills in terms of um, public speaking, uh, meeting individuals that are leaders in the community, um, gaining a, a greater perspective of you mm -hmm. know what the business and community means. I, I think all of those come together with the YP program. Right, and it, it's not just the chairman that gets this. I mean, you've got a, a group of people that are also young professionals around you that help pull this organization together and make it happen, and all these people benefit from this. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's definitely across the board, and I think that's why it's a thriving program. Mm -hmm. um, How many people are uh, young professionals So we're now? currently at about 250. 250, Yeah, wow. I looked at the numbers uh, last month and the month before we added I think it was 15 and about 20 members per Very month before. Good. So it's it's good. It's growing. Yeah. It is, and that's and they just had an event. Uh, what was it last week? A little dinner hopping event. Uh, that was last night. Last night. Oh, last night. okay. Yeah. Uh, how did did you go to that? I did. And how I was did. that? It was great. So this to me is one of the signature events. So the format it's called a progressive dinner. And so we had three executives, um, Sherry Manor McNamara, she was one of them from the chamber. And we had 30 people come together. We started out um, in Waikiki at Ruth's Chris. Um, mm. We spent time with one of the executives, then we changed over to Tommy Bahamas for dinner. Mm. And we went to sit down and it was great conversation. We talked about a number of things and a lot of it was just chit chatting, but you know, of course, there are important topics that we end up talking about, you know, politics, policy, um, what young people are experiencing in the business community. But by the time we reached the third location, it was, um, it was, it was, it was a good time. A little I mean, bit more relaxed. A lot more relaxed. Yeah, yeah. I guess I would assume that maybe there was a little bit of wine flowing there. It was, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, people were having a good time. Good, good. Yeah. I wish I had been there. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's good. But but you get to establish relationships, not you know, not only with the executives that you're meeting with, but also with the peer groups that you have, and it becomes a good support group, somebody you can bounce ideas off of and right. different thoughts. Right. Yeah, and I think we're seeing that right now, um, in terms of some of the programs or initiatives um, that we're looking at. Um, we have a couple of events coming up. One at the end of this month that we're really excited about. Um, but really, the the brainchild of that was getting the young professionals together and um, the buy-in, the support. Um, everyone had good feedback that we put into play in terms of um, how we're going about executing this this program. Yeah, very good. Is this a program that you're keeping a secret or can you share with us what this is going to be at the end of the month? You said sure. there's a... Yeah, so it, it's going to be on September 29th and it's actually in collaboration with the Chamber. 
we're the chamber sponsoring the the mayoral debate. Oh yeah. And so we're really I, I looking saw the flyers for, on that. Yep. So as part of it, um, you know, one of the initiatives and goals that we talked about as a young professionals group was really to raise awareness, um, get people out mm -hmm, to vote, mm -hmm. but understanding the policy, um, what it means even as the you know in the election process. And I think with the poor turnout that we had during the primaries, it's just a lot of it is just um, the goal of getting people out and interested in things that make a difference. You know, and that's a message that I think as a community we really need to get out there. I, I think, you know, and not making too much of a political statement, but I, I think it was the younger voters that got Obama elected. Yeah, that was a big area. Right. And it made a huge difference in the country. Mm -hmm. you know for the last eight years mm -hmm. you know um and something similar like that could happen if we could get the young voters engaged and get them to go out and vote i, I think they could actually have some pretty significant influence mm -hmm. in what happens in hawaii right right yeah and i it's important because everyone's affected um just because you're a younger person doesn't mean that your vote doesn't matter and it's interesting even during conversation last night that was you know there are a couple of um kind of setbacks or reasons why people said they, they didn't participate um, in the primary election. And a lot of it had to do with just the mindset of uh, my vote doesn't really count. Even if I voted, the process is somewhat determined. And you know, it's unfortunate um, that that's kind of the thought. But I think if people really voted what they wanted, and I, that's, that's how I am too. In the past, I was one of those that didn't think my vote mattered, but um, someone it was actually my wife told me that if you know if you're not going to be part of the process and the solution, then don't complain about the situation uh, and outcome. Exactly, and yeah. you know, and you know, I think one another way to look at it: uh, does one vote matter? Of course it does, and I've seen some in the past mm -hmm. elections that were decided on just a few votes. Right. You know, but if I mean, just got, I don't know how many of the people there are under 39 that would be considered young professionals, but if there's 10 or 15 thousand of them. And if they all voted, that ten or fifteen thousand swing vote absolutely could make a huge difference in the elections in the state. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I think part of what you're doing at the Young Professional Program is creating this higher level awareness of what the issues are, and and being able to step in and analyze and look at it and, and educate. And this is right. great. It's yeah. good stuff. All right. Well, we're going to take a, a short break, and then we're going to get into the Hawaii Tech support. The, what you really do for a living, what puts money in your pocket. So we'll talk about that in the second half of the show. Okay. Uh, but this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I'm here with, with Stan Lau talking about uh, the Young Professional Program at the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and we're going to be talking about his company where he's the CEO of Hawaii Tech Support uh, in the second half of the show. So we'll be back in just one minute. Welcome to Asia in the Wheel. Looking forward to see you next month on October 13, Thursday at 11 o'clock. Aloha and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. I am Ina Chang. I am the guest host for Small Business Hawaii with Reg Baker. Tune in every Thursday at 2 p.m. and watch us. Aloha. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with The Economy and You, and I'd like to invite you each week to come watch my show each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We are the co-hosts of Keys to Success, which is live on ThinkTech live streaming network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha, and welcome back to Business in Hawaii. We're here this week talking with Stan Lau of the Hawaii Tech Support Company and also chairman of the Chamber of Commerce's Young Professional Program. Uh, we're, he just started this company only 13 years ago, uh, but for you know, overall 13 years surviving in the high tech industry is an accomplishment. And he's got some of the, the first clients he's ever had, they're still clients, so that's a real testimonial to doing a, a really super job. Tell us a little bit about your company. Sure. Uh, like you mentioned, um, we started 13 years ago. Um, I started as a one-person company, um, taking my experience from working in LA and bringing it back here. Um, at the time, the, the technology gap wasn't as 
you know, as big as we think it would be. I think Hawaii companies are on par, but at Uh, one of the challenges is uh, having enough available resources. And at the time, you know, our, our business and the model that it, it's in was relatively new. The mm -hmm. whole idea of outsourcing in terms of technology, mm -hmm. it was so common to have um, on-site um, company provided staff. Right, the, the servers were all on-site. And, and some of these servers were pretty big, you know, you yeah. got the AS300s or, or you yeah. know, the IBM mainframes and all yeah. that, you know. It's, mm -hmm. uh, but So you actually serve as an outsourced IT department? Right, so that's the core of our focus. We're what's called a managed service provider. Mm -hmm. And so our business is the outsourced IT service um, or arm of companies. And so our typical clients, um, they're in various industries, mm -hmm. but you'll find that the segment that can use a service like ours is in, roughly, they have 20 to 75 employees. Um, to fill that need and so a lot of our clients are in that space and we provide services anywhere I like to say from broadband to the desktop mm -hmm. and so internal um, infrastructure help desk um, Project planning. So in that type of environment does the desktop kind of act as a remote terminal into your hardware or does some of it reside in the client's offices? Right, so things are starting to change. Um, traditional networking setups and environments are st they're still predominant so um, a company will have their desktops um, at their de you know in the office mm -hmm. at the desk but you have a lot of mobile users but uh, one of the things that I started talking about and am a big proponent of you know, as of even three, four years ago, is this idea of what's called virtual desktops. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you're alluding to mm -hmm. is, um, are people really working on their terminals uh, and their actual laptops where corporations can provide infrastructure that provides these virtual desktops in a data center that right. they can connect to? Well, and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but, I you mean, know, Windows 365 kind of serves in, in a capacity like that where the processing is actually done remotely uh, and you don't have to have a lot of it, you know, on your desktop. Yeah, so Microsoft has yeah, a number of solutions. Um, so hosted Exchange, I think Office 365, that's what you're, mm -hmm. you're referring to. They have Azure, which is um, virtual machines and servers in their infrastructure. So it's, I think it's a lot easier for businesses to get off the ground in terms of the technology investment because it's no longer a one-time purchase and manage mm -hmm. and maintain. Well, and it's not just one time, Stan. I, when I had my business, I had 28 offices and I had to buy computers for these offices every three or four years mm -hmm. and they were expensive. Mm -hmm. And then you had to buy the software to go onto the computers. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it adds up. It does. It's a, it's a cost. It's a big expense. So, yeah. it, you know, to have this type of environment now it, and have it scalable, mm -hmm. you know, start with a one person, you know, and I'm not talking about you, but a, another company, a client could come in with one person, but with the plans of growing it. Mm -hmm. And they could grow that relatively painlessly, could they not, using, you know, I mean, your technology and then just having a, an interface into your systems. Right, right. Yeah, it's, you know, the days of... Um, running out of space and then having to scrap your investment after a year to buy bigger, faster, um, you know, that's that's kind of on its way out. Yeah, and the yeah. planned obsolescence is built into the system, <laughs> so, you know, yeah. it's nice to have someone else carry that risk. Right. right. So, tell me, what, what do you think would be a case study, if you will? What, what is the type of client that you think would be best suited for what you offer? So our our clients that the, the client that we look for is one it's technology um, savvy so they have a use and dependence on technology mm -hmm. whether that be um, engineering architecture healthcare um, law firms actually if you look at it you know so many industries nowadays are you know they're almost completely dependent on it and I guess a quick test you could you know say is if you if your systems went down how much productivity could that company have and so that's right. that's a good measure of you know their dependence on technology but in terms of size you know we, like I said um, anywhere from 15 to 75 employees um, and there's reasons for that some of its financial um, some of mm -hmm. it is complexity um, but industry wise we don't focus on a particular industry even though we kind of have clusters of industries um, 
but I, that's that's kind of our typical client. And what kind of, I mean, do you have software as a service or is that part of the package or are we just talking about hardware? Yep, we do. So in terms of um, solutions, I, if you think about what a company needs to run, um, like I was saying earlier, broadband to mm -hmm. desktop, so we're talking about their internet connection, the hardware, the file services, communications like email, messaging, mm -hmm. um, yeah, file storage and sharing, yep. security, backup, um, help desk, all of that is... Firewalls. Firewalls, yep, as part of their security, yeah. and which is you know, a big thing these days too. Yep. Um, it's always been, but it's just because of awareness, and I think this is an, another awareness issue too, especially with the incidents that have happened over the last couple of years. Um, people are more aware, they're talking about it. One of the, um, and I'll, I'll use this as an example, and then you, you share with me if that's something that, that you work with your clients on, but I've been doing, I've had in-house servers doing tax software, which is pretty intense, mm -hmm. you know, type of software packages. It can do a lot of different company, you know, ty types of companies in different states, blah, blah, blah. And right now, I've gotten rid of all of that, and everything is done through a portal. Mm -hmm. And I have no software anymore that resides on any of my hardware. And I can pick up any laptop, and I can, with the proper coding, you know, and the passwords and all that, tap right into my company and all of its tax returns, and I can process anywhere in the country or the world for that matter. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't have to worry about the upgrades, I don't have to worry about you know, um, any of the hardware issues or the backup issues or any of this kind of stuff. Uh, and so the need for me to have large investments in the hardware is, is quickly reducing down almost nothing because everything is done through portals um, through the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and that's, is that something that you can help companies go through and identify and transition to? Yeah, that is, that is. so you, what you're talking about is this as a service right. um, delivery. So this started um, maybe about five years ago, I would say in terms of mainstream, it's, it's been around. So in the past, that's where Citrix and those types of exactly. companies started. Go to my you know, PC it was and all kind that. of their bread and butter for application delivery. Yeah. And so with you know, the advancement of that, everything became, you know, there's a web service for that, there's an app for that, there's a portal for that, like you said. So really the investment and maintaining all of that takes, it's taken away from, you know, your lap and then moved on to the vendors, which, right. you know, they're the vendor for it. They made it, they're the best Well, at it doing provides that. an opportunity for them, but also provides a huge cost savings for the people who used to cover all of that. Yeah. So there's an economies of scale benefit that's beginning to take place here. Mm -hmm. And I think as the economy evolves and the workplace evolves into this more of a, if I could use the term, a, a virtual office type of environment, mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden the footprint for these companies are beginning to shrink because they can access this information from a lot of different areas, like from your home. It's, it's interesting you mentioned that. So our company's um, lease is up at the end of the year and one of the kind of strategies that we've been talking about was maintaining a smaller office but mm -hmm. having um, staff work virtually or not assigned to an office and I think you know the big benefit to that is aside from you know the cost savings and whatnot but really um, the commute the quality of life for um, employees and for our employees because a lot of them will go out in the field to customer sites um, coming into the office is great for team building and mm -hmm. that cohesiveness. Um, but in terms of you know their overall quality of life, not having to you know fight traffic, um, you know suit up and that kind of thing. Well, and you touched on that. You know the the client service aspect too. I think can be really enhanced because now all of a sudden you can start going out to the client's office and being more close to them and doing some of the work there. Mm -hmm. Um, and build better relationships with them. You know, I do that now in my environment uh, where I'm, you know, one of the few CPAs in town, I think, that actually make house calls. Yeah. You know, I can go and do whatever I need to do anywhere I need to do it and whatever's uh, convenient for the client. If they want to meet in an office, I can do that, but then there's parking issues and get downtown and all this kind of stuff. Or we can go somewhere else, even your house. Right, right. You know, and there's, there, there's a lot of positive customer service elements to that. Right, yeah. You know, so you, you, um, 
wouldn't have to do as much advertising either. <laughs> the word will get out there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been good. I think, yeah, over the years, um, you know, growth is always good. Staying in an industry that's constantly changing is, I think that's probably one of the big challenges for us. Now, let me, in the high tech industry that you're naturally in, yeah. one of the challenges that I've heard is sometimes getting access to skills you know, the talent sometimes is a challenge. But if you're working in this virtual world, can't you tap into that talent anywhere that it might be? That's, you know, that's a really good, um, there are definitely opportunities for that. I think where we are, um, especially being Hawaii and the dynamics, you know, I think in other environments where um, people are more about, uh, a little less about the relationship and more about, you know, what gets done. Um, it's not that th we don't get things done here, but there is still that personal aspect. Um, we've considered, you know, doing that in terms of using outside um, back-end support. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. ultimately, you know, my goal is to have people be able to call, know who they've talked to. We've had mm -hmm. events with clients um, coming in and they meet some of our engineers and techs and you know, they're excited because it's like, oh, you're the person that I talked to on the phone or, you know, I think and there's a You don't want to lose that. I mean, no. that's part of that yeah. relationship. But if there are components of what these individuals, these professionals are doing mm -hmm. that can be done, I mean, if there's, I'm just using a term, coding, or if there are some, you know, non-customer facing type of activities mm -hmm. uh, that can be outsourced. Um, you know, you could outsource that to anywhere that that talent might be, True. you know, uh, and have that done and still have that boots on the ground here dealing with the clients. Uh, and so all of a sudden what I'm getting at is, is the challenges of having the proper skill sets in Hawaii mm -hmm. become less of an issue if you're able to tap into it wherever it's at, whether it be New York, San Francisco, Houston, whatever. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, I think... Um, in our industry and just talking to different companies, there's always, I, the need here is, it's huge in terms of um, qualified, skilled individuals. Even with that option, um, there's still that element. So, you know, we're, we're looking for people. Um, we've had a hard time in terms of um, qualified candidates that have come through, but I think just based on you know, discussions with other employers, everyone's having a similar they problem. It, yeah. It's not easy to find good people, yeah. but uh, we are gonna wrap up here sure. real, real quick. Uh, if somebody wanted to know more about your company, what would be the website they could go to? Sure, it's a www.hitechsupport, that's H-I-techsupport.net. Dot net, mm -hmm. okay. Yep. And do you have job postings on there too? We have on, job postings on there. All right, there. so if somebody's looking for a job, they can go there as well. Yes. All right. Very good. Stan, it was great to have you on the show today. Um, we'll have to have you come back again. Uh, but this is uh, Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I was here with Stan Lau. We're talking about Hawaii tech support uh, and the Chamber Young Professional Program. Uh, we air every Thursday at 2 o'clock. Uh, we talk 30 minutes with successful businesses and individuals in Hawaii. I hope to see you next week. Until then, aloha.